Good Tuesday morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning to uh, dive into the letters of Paul. We are in Romans. Um, give everyone just a moment here to, to get on. If you're driving, stay safe. Just listen. Uh, if you're at home, grab your Bible. Uh, we are going to stay and get into the absolute truth right here. Um, I put a post out yesterday on my personal page. Uh, just a quick search of some of the top Christian books that are being sold uh, this Christmas season. And every one of them is a deception. And uh, you've got to be really careful about what you read. You know, the enemy takes a little bit of truth and he twists it with some philosophy. And Paul warns us about that. I put a, a scripture quote on there. I think it was Colossians 2.8. Um, so important to stay in the truth. So we're going to get into that right now. We are in Romans. I'm going to read verse 16. This is chapter 1, verse 16 to 25. And then we're going to sort of just pick it apart real quick. Verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them. For God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so, they are with, so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. Paul doesn't waste any time. After he goes through his introduction that we went over yesterday, he is like, pow, he's coming right at him. And when he says in the beginning, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, you have to realize what had happened, <coughs> excuse me, what had happened to Paul up to this point. Um, he had been imprisoned, stoned, chased out of Thessalonica, laughed at in Athens, um, whipped. They did everything to this guy. If you, ever, if you want to really see all the things that happened to Paul, read the book of Acts. Uh, get into the second half of Acts. Chapters 1 through 13 are really about the ministry of Peter. And from 13 to 26 is, is about the ministry of Paul. You can see everything that this man went through. He was remarkable. And he just kept going. They put him in prison and sing praises all night. Um, so when he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, that is a statement. Um, really, really big statement. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, but the righteous man shall live by faith. This is it. really interesting here. Remember we said Paul was a Pharisee. He was a very studied Pharisee. He knew the scriptures inside and out. This is a quote from Habakkuk, okay, which is the Old Testament. And it's uh, Habakkuk 2.4, chapter 2, verse 4. 
Behold, as for the proud one, his soul is not right within him. How about that? This is the Old Testament. But the righteous will live by his faith. That is Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. What Paul's doing here is introducing the fact that this is not a new concept. Salvation by faith is not a new concept. A lot of them thought that it was, but they just didn't see it in the Old Testament. They, weren't, they didn't have eyes to see and ears to hear. They did not see this. So Paul is making the case, and he's beginning it right now, with the fact that salvation by faith alone in Jesus Christ is not a new concept. It has always been there. And he's quoting Old Testament scripture to make his case. And he's just setting it up uh, for the rest of the book. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. So as soon as Paul does that, he now brings in evidence of man's sinful nature. And I love this because this is something I go to a lot. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. And I always remind myself of this when I am going to witness to somebody. Um, when you get those opportunities to get in front of somebody and tell them about Jesus and that that confidence just disappears and you forget about this scripture. Everybody knows about God. He put it in their hearts. They just choose to reject him. So this is very important. This is one of those verses you can hang your hat on when you're out and you're going to talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. Remember, they already know about him. They just choose to reject him. For since the creation of the world, verse 20, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. All of my fishing buddies out there, all the fly fishing guys that are, that are tuning in to us, you know that when you step on a trout stream in the springtime, and you see the way that everything in nature works. There is no way that it wasn't God that was behind that. I mean, everything from all of the small little insects that live on the bottom of the stream uh, that are available for trout to eat all through the year, depending on the water temperature and the type of water, there's always an insect for the trout to eat. There are birds that are fed by them once they hatch. The whole process is amazing. And if you're watching and you have a church that you want to have a presentation on this, I have a really cool presentation on um, Genesis and, and how it all works in nature. But this is so true. This is absolutely true. And this is something that everyone who read this in this day could understand. They were pretty tied into nature because they, they lived in nature. So um, when Paul says that his divine nature, it has been clearly seen, they understood this. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculation and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Um, this, this next line here, I'm going to ask you to think about something. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. I mentioned yesterday that the, the book of Romans is very, uh, very, very much parallel to our culture. Rome in this day was very parallel to our culture today in, in many different ways. Idolatry was a big thing back then. And, it, and it's really funny that in the history of the world, uh, if you do any research on this, the original nations that were set up 
never had idolatry. Idolatry was something that that uh, came about by man's brain, by man's ideas. And <clears throat> you know, we we think of idolatry of when when Moses had the Jews in the desert, and he was up on the mountain. And he came down and they had taken all their gold and melted it down and made a golden calf. And that's what they were worshiping. We don't do that. We can't even imagine ourselves doing that today as paganistic as we are in in America today um, and secular. We're, you know, we're such a secular nation now. We could, we could not imagine making a golden calf and dancing around it and worshiping it. But... I'm going to ask you to draw some parallels as we go through Romans. We're getting right now into the wrath of abandonment. And this is when a, a culture becomes so corrupt that God turns his back on the culture. It has happened over and over again uh, in the Bible with many different nations. It's happened with, with uh, the Jewish nation. So... What's going to be described here tomorrow, you're going to see really clearly that it's exactly what happened in our country. But I want you to think about this, and I'm going to ask you to take a leap. And you have to be so careful when you do this, because this is, this is where you don't want to make um, wild predictions out of Scripture. Just take it for what it says and think about it. So when it says... Uh, they exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling creatures. I'm just going to put it in your mind so that you have it there for tomorrow once we get into some more of this. This is the global, in my mind, the global climate, um, human rights animal activists this is the first form of idolatry activism okay and it's interesting that that it says right here in romans that, that of birds and four-footed animals um and crawling creatures i mean it's just i just want you to think about that as we go forward and i'll tie this all back to this point but you have to look at romans this book was written not for the people back in that age. It was written for them, but it was also written for us. It's written for everyone. So you can apply this book to your life, to your culture. This is the truth. Okay? Therefore God gave them over to their lot to the in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the, cre the creature, and not the creator. The creature is us. We began to worship us. We do that today, don't we? Impurity is, uh, in this context, is, is sexual impurity. So as we move forward tomorrow, you're going to see... Um, Feel free to, to open the Bible up and, and read it. Read ahead. I'm going to explain to you what this means, this wrath of abandonment, and the order of things that occur to make that happen. It's fascinating. It happened in Rome 2,000 years ago. It's very, very pertinent to our culture today. That's going to do it for today. Stay in the truth, folks. I love you. God loves you. I'll see you in the morning.